hear me out there in Wibitania getting ready to start our program all right here we go incredibly exciting program tonight my friends we're gonna be talking about math and we have some new material for you so we're broadcasting live October 2nd from Yucaipa, California. I'm Chris Biffle. This is Super Speed Math. And before we go any further, we got a brand new program nobody's ever seen before. Not even my wife. And I feel like there's a lot of attention going on, a lot of focus. I'll show you the brand new program. It's called Chocolate Math. Tell me how much you like the title already, Chocolate Math. Oh, yeah, people love it online. Let's go to our next important announcement. We encourage you to become certified whole brain teachers online 24-7, free, and you can determine the area of your concentration. We award points to you for your participation, posting essays on our forum, and you can go all the way from a WBT board certified instructor way up to an international presenter, my friends. Now, to find out more about certification, it's a piece of cake right here you can read this PDF shows you all the steps that you can go through to become board certified add it to your resume make your colleagues jealous become better and better join one of the fastest growing education reform movements in the world why are we growing so fast we're fun and free. Two irresistible forces in the modern world. You can't stop fun and you can't stop free. All right, here we go. Now, if you want to work on your certification already tonight, you're going to write an essay. What are the strengths and weaknesses of whole brain teaching super speed math? Post your answer on the forum at wholebrainteaching.com under the topic. You can get from 50 to 75 certification points. I'll show you exactly where to post it. I'm scrolling down, my friends. And right here, post it under this topic. We'll read it, or Nancy Stoltenberger will read it. One of my colleagues on the executive board will take a look at it and will award you some points. All right. Now, let's get to the meat of it. Why do my kids make so many math mistakes, asks our friend, Nervous Nita. I'll tell you, Nervous, why we make math mistakes. Here it is, right here. Four reasons. Our kids are not getting enough repetitions. Why do we still have kids who are seniors in high school who make a mistake about seven times eight? They're not unintelligent. They haven't had enough repetitions. And when they do write down seven times eight, and they've been missing that for five years, the correction comes 24 hours later, if that soon. So it's as if I'm teaching you how to play tennis and you're having a problem with your serve, and I wait a day to tell you what was wrong with it. When you make a mistake, the correction needs to happen as soon after the mistake as possible, while the mistake is still fresh and juicy in your mind. We also have lots of math errors because it's no fun. What's the most common thing that you hear? I don't like math. Why? It's no fun and I don't get it. 
Well, you could say the same thing about polo. More repetitions, more fun. And what's the reward? Let's just stop right there. Look at me, my friends. I'm taking the glasses off already. What is a student's reward for being good at math? It's months down the line when maybe they get a good grade in math. We need a reward not for math ability, but for math improvement. If we're rewarding for improvement, then every kid can get an award. How do we reward for improvement? Wait and see. All right, so that's why we have math errors. Now check this out. The question is, what's the solution? This is one of our oldest, most vigorously classroom tested ebooks. And if you don't know how to download an ebook, I'm going to tell you right now. Go to wholebrainteaching.com right there. Register right here. Register. Then go up to free ebooks. Download all you want, but you send an email to 10 teachers telling them how much you appreciate our free materials. Help us help others as we help you. We don't want just people downloading our stuff and keeping it for themselves because the problem in American education, my friends, is not just in your classroom. It's in classrooms across the country. We got to get together here. All right, so all about super speed math. Notice this is super speed math 2.0 with fractions. Oh, yeah. Now, here's how it works. I'm going to enlarge the screen and, you know, I'm going to focus so you can really see what we're talking about. Here's level one, the addition test. Notice that it has all the combinations of math facts. Zero plus zero, zero plus one, one plus zero, every combination of math fact all the way up to 10 plus 10. Also notice it's in numerical order, zero plus zero up to 10 plus 10. Also notice there's no answers here. Here's a first big point. Listen to me. Kids do not write on these tests. You'd have to grade it then. You don't want to grade it. It's all oral. So one kid has the test, and the other kid, look at the screen, the other kid has the answers. You see what I'm talking about here? I'll go in real tight. The other kid has the answers. So here's how it works. One kid orally takes the test, and the other kid with the answers provides correction when necessary. Look at the next screen. Notice that there are some blue boxes here. These are the gnarlies, and you know them. 8 plus 5 and 5 plus 8 is a gnarly. You'll see lots of errors there. 6 plus 7, 8 plus 6, those are the gnarlies. Those are the ones that we want kids to spend a lot of time on. Don't get ahead of me now. Nervous Nita says, I hope it's a game. My kids love games. Yes, Nervous, it is a game. Lindsay Roush, I've heard a lot of bad things about rocket math. So divide the class into pairs, salt and pepper. 
Odd number of kids, you are that child's partner. Salt looks at the test sheet and answers as many problems as possible on the test in one minute. No writing. Pepper has the answers. Let's look at this. Here's Salt. Here's Pepper. Salt is looking at the test with no answers. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 2 is 2. Fast as possible. Pepper's over here looking at her own sheet that has the questions and the answers. So if Salt makes a mistake, Pepper's on top of it. Now, next step, stay with me. If Salt misses, Pepper says the correct answer and go back to. Salt puts a pencil dot on the problem missed and goes back two problems and continues forward answering problems as quickly as possible in a one minute time limit. So, the person who's taking the test has a pencil. They're using the pencil as a partner to help them track. When they make a mistake, their partner says the right answer and then go back to. Salt immediately puts a dot on that problem. That's a personal gnarly. Goes back to and hopefully remembers the answer when she gets up there. So errors are immediately corrected. And of course errors are going to slow you down if you're trying to answer as many problems as possible in a minute. It's a race against the clock. When you get kids racing against the clock, heart rate goes up. Now, after a minute, Salt circles the last problem answered. Then Salt and Pepper review the dotted problems that Salt missed. Uh, it's weird to say this, my friends, but this is a new piece. I don't know why we didn't have this before. The kid is dotting the problems mixed, missed. Time is up. Okay. Go back and review those dotted problems because you're going to do it again. You need to know the answer to the dotted problems to break your record. You see that? All right. So each kid, let's look at this with our sockless hand puppets. Each kid is going to take the test twice. First, as fast as possible, dotting the wrong ones, circling as far as you get, then going back up to the start, the teacher says go again, and then go! As fast as you can, see if you can break your record. Here's the deal. Our brain is set up to break its records. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Repeat the problem a few times, and you're going to grow some healthier dendrites and the answer that came like that will start to come like that. Guaranteed. Kids are guaranteed winners and that's what they never see in math. They never see any progress. They never get the feeling of mastery. They never get the feeling that they're going somewhere. Math is like a treadmill in a boiler room. Where am I going? Nowhere. What am I doing this for? I don't know. I never use this word as a philosophy teacher, but I'll use it now. It's like an existential grief. Meaningless suffering. But not with super speed math. I'm getting somewhere. Oh, I got to learn those gnarlies. Oh, I broke my record. So here is your slowest kid. Doesn't feel so good about himself. He can break records as frequently as your kid going to Harvard. Do you love that? And your Harvard kid cannot sit on her laurels. She's up against it just like everybody else. No rewards for you unless you beat yourself. Setting and breaking personal records is one of, I think, the strongest features 
of many of our academic games. Now, what about the other kid? Well, I'm sure you understand. When salt is done, then it's Pepper's turn. She uses her own sheet, dotting the incorrect problems, reviewing her errors, and then trying to beat her record again. Same way. So, salt gets two tries, tries to break a record, reviews her dotted errors, then it's Pepper's turn. But listen, each kid must have their own super speed math sheet because salt is going to keep track of her records and Pepper is going to keep track of her records. And here's the big point. Nerva says, wait a minute. Are you saying the kids aren't competing against each other? <laughs> Huge point coming. Bingo, bango, bongo. Yes, kids are setting and breaking personal records. Who cares if one kid is faster than another? The real question is, are kids faster than themselves? And I'm going to correct the typo on the fly. That's the question. This is a revolutionary moment in American education, and I hope you're ready for the revolution. We've been preaching it now for... We've been preaching it this way for at least six months. No more rewarding for ability unless you got to, and you got to. Reward for improvement. Reward for setting and breaking personal records. That's built into super speed math. Lots of repetition. Lots of self-competition. Lots of building a sense of math competence and personal worth. I can do this. Kids are coming in contract with the structure of their brain. They don't realize that they're getting somewhere because we don't have any system that shows them they are getting somewhere. You'll have your kids begging you to play super speed math. Now, my friends, check it out. But wait, it gets better. Check it out. Here it is. Level 2 addition test. All combination of math facts from 0 to 10. Random order and no answers. Let's just stop right there. Level 1 addition. Numerical order. Pretty simple. You just got to count. But we need that confidence building, speed building exercise. When a kid can work through level one, then we go to level two. And now, oh, not so simple, my little math whiz. We took all the numbers that were arranged so neatly, and we scrambled them up. Oh, no. And look at the gnarlies. They floated to the top. Yes, my friends. Check it out. Oh no, all the nollies are at the top. Play level two the same way as level one. Each kid sets and breaks personal records, always racing for a minute, always reviewing mistakes. Huge point coming again. Yes, the huge points are piling up. If a student breaks a personal record, then the next time they play, they start one line down from their previous point. And here's what Nervous Nita says. Frankly, I don't get it. Let me explain it to you, Nervous. Look at the screen, my friends. Nita playing began at A1, right here, A1. 7 plus 9. She played for a minute, and she got down here to D5. 2 plus 9, see? D, 5. She played again for a minute, starting at 7 plus 9, and this time, oh my gosh, she got down to A, 6. She broke her record. What does that mean that she broke her record? Next time she plays on another day, check it out, instead of starting at 7 plus 9, she starts at 8 plus 4, A, 2. 
She broke her record. The next day she plays. Nita gets to start at A2 and try to set a new personal record. That way she'll work through all the problems. Do you see the beauty of that? Yes, my friends. That's how we move down. You broke your record. You started here last time. Next time, just start one line down. You're always going to be in the A column. Look at it. You're going to start at A1. You break your record, go to A2. You break your record, go to A3. You break your record enough, and it looks like we got a little disconnection here. I think I'm back. Yes, there is a tracking sheet in the ebook. A place where you can keep your personal records. But now what about subtraction, multiplication, and division? Can you get the big picture? Level 1 addition, numerical order. Level 2 addition, random order. All the math facts. What if we did the same thing for subtraction? Yes, let's do. Here's subtraction. Look. Level 1 subtraction. Level 1 numerical order. Level 2 random order. Kids racing to set and break personal records while reviewing their errors, their personal gnarlies. Here's subtraction. Level 1 test. Gnarlies down here. Level 1 answers. Gnarlies in the same place. Notice 0 minus 0, 1 minus 0, 2 minus 0. All the way down to 11 minus 1. So we get to the tens. Now, level 2 test subtraction. Random order. Look at those stinking gnarlies. Moved up to the top, my friend. But wait a second. It worked for addition, subtraction. Could we do the same thing for multiplication? Could we have a game that is so fast to learn, you don't have to reteach it over and over again, and it would cover a universe of math facts? Yes! Let's do it. Check it out. Multiplication level one test. Level 1 answers, numerical order, 0 times 0, 0 times 1, 0 times 2, nice and easy padeasy. Now level 2 test, oh, oh my goodness, look, look what's happening right up here in the first line level 2. Let's get a close up of these terrible gnarlies. 6 times 7 and then 10 times 3 and then 6 times 8 and 10 times 7, ho 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 ho. I really got to know my multiplication facts. And you could use, as somebody online points out, you could use the same format for square roots, Pythagorean theorem, you name it. Here's division. 1 divided by 1. Numerical order. Here's division. 36 divided by 6 now we're at level 2. Look at it. I know you don't believe it, but look at where those gnarlies are. They're right up there at the top. So let's just talk about it. Folks, you're online. You're live. What are you liking about this? I'm going to just stop for a second. Have a shot of California clear and see what my online friends have to say. Oh, Jay Cruz from back east only loves everything about it. Immediate feedback, peer teaching, no grading, self-competition. Kids will think it's fun. Less paper, instant results. Simplicity. Can't wait to start. And it's fast. 
And you don't have to be in the mix. My friends, you're on the same wavelength as Coach B. Differentiated instruction, but wait, wait, my friends, it gets better. Let's talk about gnarlies. Now, gnarlies, that's our little word for tough math problems, like 5 plus 8 and 8 plus 5. So at the next level, up past addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, let's just look at all the gnarlies on one screen, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, in numerical order, but now all the hard ones. Yes. Look at them. Now, if level one gnarly is numerical order, my online friends, let's see if you're keeping up with me. What is level two gnarly going to be like? I'll take another shot of California Clear. You're right. Random order. Brainiac upside down. That would be a good one. But let's do random order. This is the ultimate test. And my friends, our fourth graders should be able to whiz through these problems. I've had auditoriums of teachers embarrassed when they cannot whip through this list. Here are in one screen Probably 90% of the math errors made in the world. And why can't we master them? Because, my friends, not enough repetitions. So let's give them the reps. Let's build student self-confidence. But J.J. Jive, as always, wants to know what about fractions? Here's fractions, my friend. Super speed math fractions gives students lots of practice in reducing fractions. Let's look at the problems. Same format, level one test, numerical order. You have some kids who don't know that two over one is two. And they don't know that six over nine can be reduced to two thirds, but seven over nine can't be reduced further. So level one fractions. Here's level one answers. Notice the mix of whole numbers and fractions. And then level two, just like everything else, randomize the problems. Four over three, seven over two. You got to think about seven over two a little bit. 10 over 3. We need the reps here. This should come automatically, and it doesn't. Why? Not enough reps, not enough fun. So now Nervous Nita gets the big picture. Why do my kids make so many math mistakes? She sees the solution. Remember this screen from the beginning? Too few reps. Well, lots of reps with super speed math. Errors corrected too late. Errors are corrected immediately. Zero fun, lots of fun. 
non-motivating rewards, intrinsic reward for improving, emphasized by the super improvers team. I'm going to come clean with you, my friends. I like rewards of all kinds, me personally. I like intrinsic rewards, but I like extrinsic rewards too. You probably don't like extrinsic rewards, but I do. It's called a paycheck. So anytime we can give kids rewards, let's do. But I do agree. The reward that is inherent in success at the activity is the most motivating to keep doing the activity. And an intrinsic reward is like the more you eat, the hungrier you get for that food. So, intrinsic reward for super speed math. You get the thrill of improving. Just seeing your math scores, your math speed increase, and then use the super improver team. If you don't know about the super improver team, you need to. This is our umbrella over everything we do. We want to see all our kids improve. Kindergarten through college. How do you find out about the super improvers team? I'm going to tell you, my friends. Here I am on the website. And here I am in my webcast right here in the middle. See that? See, there's this little black arrow. And you go way back. There's 40 of them now. 40 weeks we've been doing this, having a blast. And right here, program 503, all about the Super Improvers team. So Super Speed Math is part of this bigger project to help kids see that they're getting someplace. Now, for your older kids, here is a weekly schedule. Do addition on Monday, subtraction on Tuesday, multiplication on Wednesday, Thursday division, and Friday do fractions or gnarlies. All right. Now, you might want a copy of these slides. Here's Ms. Linenthal, one of our favorite instructors. Hiya, Coach. Hello, Ms. Linenthal. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Coach. I love super speed math, but <clears throat> how could I get professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides. Ms. Linenthal, I'm glad you asked. You can get a copy of these slides and professional development certificate. Go to wholebrainteaching.com, click on the PayPal button, I'll show you, and put $5.40 in there. Before long, sometimes within minutes, you'll get an email with a professional development certificate. Here it is. You can show it to your district. It certifies that you watched a one-hour program and you'll get a copy of all these slides. Now I'm not done yet my friends. I told you we had a special program this week called Chocolate Math. Anybody digging chocolate math? Just the name chocolate math? Yeah. I woke up with this, I think only 24 hours ago, and I thought, oh, we got to... Let me just stop. So I love super speed math. It solves a lot of instructional problems, but it doesn't solve the ultimate instructional problem, which is to give our kids deep understanding. Call it critical thinking. Call it exploratory learning. Whatever you want to call it, the most advanced intellectual activity, that's our goal. So kids know that eventually that 5 times 7 is 35, but what does that mean? 5 times 7 is 35. It means 5 times 7 is 35. Yeah, but what are you doing when you do 5 times 7 is 35? I think most kids in the United States do not understand very clearly 
that multiplication is repeated addition. You know what I'm saying? So we need some kind of graphic way of exploring. Now there's two, two alternatives. One is a thing called Singapore math, which I think is fantastic. It's got a couple of problems. Main problem is it's expensive and you gotta buy the books. But it gives kids a graphic understanding of math problems. I looked at it, I thought this is great. How could I do it more cheaply at any grade level? That's my first question because why? I'm a teacher like you. Let me just stop there with more cheaply than Singapore math. Bless the authors of Singapore math. Brilliant idea. Now, if you don't know about Singapore math, do you know about unifix cubes? I love unifix cubes. You've got these little cubes and you can make numbers out of them. Problem with uh, unifix cubes is they cost money and I never use them, but I bet they get all over the place. Chocolate math is an alternative. And I'm real interested to see what you think about chocolate math. So my online friends, please, please stay with me. Stay on task here. I got this enormous screen to show you. Chocolate math. Here it is. I'm going to have to even go up higher here with this. This is a PDF. You know, if I was a real nice guy, I'd say, I'll send you the PDF. But I don't know. I've just got to wait and see. Got to wait and see what kind of response I get to chocolate math before I say I'll actually send you the you know here here's what I'm saying I'm saying I'm gonna show you a PDF that's different than anything else we've done because you could download this and print out stuff to use in class free are you digging that all right Let's look at it. Chocolate math. Now, here we are. Use blank chocolate squares to help students visualize math relationships. There's a hundred squares. And notice, my friends, it's milk chocolate alternating with semi-sweet for maximum scrumptiousness and also to make it easier to see the rows and lines. So 100 squares of chocolate or 100 number squares of chocolate. And we will send you, as part of the PDF, both. Now, anybody up to speed already in my online audience see where this is gonna go anybody see where this is going the chocolate stuff yeah s'mores brainiac you're funny tonight my friend great sense of humor break them up groups of ten Check it out. Let's, here, here's my goal. And I'm taking time. I'm really savoring this because it's brand new. I've never explained it before. My goal is, can I give kids a visual understanding of what's going on in addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, and such a rich visual understanding that they could use this visual understanding to solve word problems. I'll just pause there while a number of you faint from delight. Yeah. Word problems. Here we go. Let's look at some samples. Samples, my friend. 
I'm going to have to keep moving this guy around because the screen is so big. Prove that 4 plus 3 is 7. Well, uh, one little point. Tell me it's cool. I'm saying laminate it. On one side, you have laminated the number chocolate squares. On the other side, laminate the blank chocolate squares so kids can mark on the laminations with at least two colors of markers. You with me? So you only got one piece of paper, one laminated piece of paper. It's pure chocolate. They're marking on these. All right, let's go back here. So you say, prove that 4 plus 3 is 7, and show the kids how to prove it. Well, wait a second. I'm going to mark off 4, and then I'm going to mark off 3. Wait a second. That's 7. You see that? Students are not repeating the answer by rote, but proving it graphically. This way, and I don't think it's any small thing that it's chocolate squares. You know what I'm saying? I think chocolate has maximum student engagement power. And that's why I'm, I'm going to have to say, I'm sorry, you probably should print this in color for yumminess. But no chocolate mess left in your hands. So show this on your computer projector and then put up some math problems where kids are going to prove 7 plus 8 is 15. Prove 6 plus 10 is what? Prove, 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 prove. What's happening? They're getting a visual understanding of addition. It's not a number and a number. It's a quantity and a quantity. And that can only be demonstrated visually. So you see how you could use chocolate math with addition. Anybody, anybody dig it. You could call it carob if you want, my friends. All right. Now, so for subtraction, you eat the chocolate if you want to. But subtraction is the same method. Show your kids on the screen how to mark off seven pieces of chocolate with an arrow and a marker. Then take away three. You have proved that seven minus three is four. Could you use this? to prove that 26 minus 15 was 11? Could you get up into double digit subtraction? Double digit addition, should you? Yes, you should. Give them a spatial visual feel for double digit addition, double digit subtraction. Place value. What's the reward here? One, of feeling a competence. Two, you're messing around with chocolate. Three, when you see kids doing good jobs of proving these, they might be leaning towards a star on the super improver team. Yes. Let's check the next one. Prove that 7 times 3 is 21. Now here... Let's look at the screen. Here I'm going to two colors of markers. I think you could pick better than white. I don't think there's a white marker, white and yellow. So make seven groups of three. Count them up. There's seven groups of three, and guess what? The last one adds up to 21. So use alternate colors. To keep track. And this shows you what multiplication is. Kids are learning multiplication facts, but they're not learning math processes. Can you dig it? And with 100 numbers, my friends, you can go all the way up to 100. Prove that 9 times 9 is 81, or 
Program. See what nine times nine is. Wait a second. I got an idea. Stop me. Stop, stop, stop. You've done the simple multiplication and you've used chocolate math with it. Then give them a multiplication problem they've never seen before. Oh, exploratory chocolate math. I wonder, my friends, what 7 times 5 is. Anybody got any ideas how we could use chocolate math to figure out what 7 times 5 is? Give me a 10-finger woo right now, my friends. I appreciate it. So you see addition, subtraction, multiplication. You know division has got to come up here. Prove that 21 divided by 7 is 3. Divide 21 into 3 equal parts. Count the number of units in each part. Why, there's 3 units in each part. No, I'm sorry, there's 7 units in each part. Tell me that's cool. That's what division is. It tells you how many little pieces there are in a big piece. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, chocolate math. What have you seen that's like this, that reminds you of this? I think this must have some advantages because it's simple. It's two-sided. It's colorful. It's, it's visual. And you could use a third color to do remainders using your number grid. Hands-on. All right, now. Question is, how do you get chocolate math? You have not earned chocolate math yet, my friends. You've earned seeing chocolate math. But I haven't figured out whether there's enough energy here Sarah Meter, I'm still waiting for a video from you, Sarah Meter. I'm not done yet, my friends. Let's talk about. I want to talk about fractions. Check it out. Prove that three quarters is equal to 75 one hundredths. That's a whomper. So divide 100 into four equal parts and mark off three of those four parts. And you show that 75 one hundredths is equal to three of four parts. Boom away! That is a math topic you never get to, my friends, I don't think. Now, equivalent fractions. Oh, wait, wait. Did I hear someone say, Coach B, what about equivalent fractions? I'm looking at my online friends, waiting to see if anybody's... Oh, there's Sarah Meter. She's asking about equivalent fractions. Yes, the Aleutian Fox is asking the same thing. Here's equivalent fractions. Prove that 6 eighths is equal to 3 fourths. Take a whole with 8 parts. Look, there's 8 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 parts. There's 6 of those 8 parts in the top line. Let's take those 8 parts and divide them into units of 2. 2, 4, 6, and 2 more left over. Look, 3 fourths is the same as 6 eighths. Can you dig equivalent fraction application? Because I, I don't know, my friends. I, I feel like you kind of like it, but I don't think you see where this is going. I don't. I don't think you see that this is going to the solution to hard word problems. 
See, I don't think you saw that. Hard word problems. Can I give you a word problem? I'm going to give you a word problem. I'm not even going to show you the answer. I'm just going to read it. Listen to this word problem. Just listen. Mary has 40 oranges. She gives one half of the oranges to Sam. Then she gives one fifth of the remaining oranges to Dee Dee. How many oranges does Mary have left? That's a fraction nightmare problem. I'm just going to show you the fraction nightmare problem. Check it out. Here it is. Can you see that? Let's read it together. Mary has 40 oranges. She gives half of the oranges to Sam. So you're thinking, all right, 20 oranges. Then she gives one-fifth of the oranges she has left to Dee Dee. Uh, that's a fifth of 20. And then I got to do a subtraction on top of that? That's a doozy. But Kate, you're right. It is easy with pictures. Check it out. Here is the slow reveal, my friends. First of all, let's set up our group of 40 oranges. Black is 40 oranges. Now, let's take half of those 40 oranges. We'll make red. Now, you could do arrows or whatever. Red is the ones she gave to Sam. Now, we can see that we got 20 oranges left. She gives a fifth of those 20 to Dee Dee. So we've got to take the 20 oranges and divide it into five equal parts. And if we mess around for a while, we will see that the only way we can get five equal parts is if each of those parts is four. So, how many are left? 16 oranges. Can you dig that? Oh, my friends. So here's what you might get. I'm not saying you're going to get it yet. I'm feeling like you might get it. You're going to get this whole PDF with blank numbered chocolate squares. What can you prove? And numbered chocolate squares. This is at the very end. And my friends, if you want more info, go to wholebrainteaching.com. If you want an on-site seminar, email me at Chris Biffle. And here's what we're going to do, unprecedented. We're going to just wait. If you dig the chocolate squares, let me hear it. I'm just sitting back here watching. You want the chocolate squares download? Yes. Oh, lots of people. Do you need to fly out there and get it, Brainiac? I'd love to have you fly out here and get it. All right. Here's the deal. Here's the deal, my friends. We said, and this is a first-time offer, we said, you send us a $5.40, we'll give you a copy of all the slides with the professional development certificate for super speed math and I'll throw in chocolate math two PDFs and one download for that five dollars and forty cents happy to do it for you my friends in fact I'll do it tonight if you will rush <laughs> to your phones. If you will rush to your computer, drop that five dollars and forty cents, a paltry amount. Drop it into this PayPal box. 
right there. I'll send you two PDFs, Chocolate Math and Super Speed Math. And if you're not watching it live, that's okay. $5.40, we're open 24-7. My friends, I loved your energy tonight. I'm so happy that I got to show you the 100 chocolate square routine. I felt like it was good, but I could tell from your reaction that it does have some promise. We didn't say what's coming next week. Next week, my friends, is a biggie. It's a biggie. Here it is. Genius Ladder 2.0. If you've used Genius Ladder, you know how wonderful it is. We've created a Genius Ladder download with hundreds of Genius Ladder patterns to teach your kids nouns, adjectives, prepositional phrases, topic sentences, detail sentences, argument develop, development, a positives and paragraphs in Genius Ladder 2.0. Enormous leap forward. All right, my friends, I must tell you that I am in deep appreciation for your prayers. My whole family is. We are beginning to have light shed down upon us because of your prayers. Please do keep us in prayer. And we thank you ever so much for that. This is the beauty of these webcasts that our hearts can talk to each other. Thank you so much. Do keep us in prayer. Let's just have the names of where you're from fly down the screen. Where are you from, my friends? Look at those places. Isn't that fabulous? So great. Kalamazoo, Michigan, Kansas City, Missouri, Crossville, Tennessee, Wilson, Kansas, San Antonio, Newcastle, Delaware. Hope to see you this Friday, October 5th, in Delaware. All right, my dear friends, my dear colleagues, my wonderful Wibbeteers, this is Coach B, as always, signing off. Power to the teachers.